Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Hi, welcome to my course on extending and creating customizations for SharePoint using the SharePoint framework. Now, I wanna take a minute to first just welcome you to my course, explain what this course is, and then we'll dive into what you're gonna find within this course. My goal in this course is to teach you what you'll need to know, not only to be productive at your job, but to master the SharePoint framework. Now in this first chapter, I'm gonna introduce you to the course so you know what you can expect. So let's start with who this course is for. You may be wondering who I built this course for. And the student that I have in mind when building this course are two different kinds of web developers. This includes developers with lots to a little bit of traditional SharePoint development experience. The types of developers who build farm solutions, sandbox solutions, SharePoint hosted add-ins, provider hosted add-ins, or developers who have used tools like SharePoint Designer to write client-side solutions. I'm also thinking about developers with experience building client-side solutions using JavaScript. Now you may not have experience developing for SharePoint in the past, and that's okay. The SharePoint framework involves creating client-side components for SharePoint using the technologies that you're familiar with, like JavaScript and CSS. It'll help to know some stuff about SharePoint, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Because let's just start by explaining what this chapter is all about. In this chapter, I'm gonna to start to, by introducing you to the different variants of this course. Now I've packaged this course into three different bundles. Right now, you're watching the free starter bundle that includes the first few chapters. And there are two more bundles that I'll cover in another lesson in this chapter. They cover the different aspects of the SharePoint framework. Now, of course, you also might want to get an idea of everything that's in the course. So before we wrap this chapter up, make sure you stop by this lesson so that you can see what topics are covered in the course. Now I'll go chapter by chapter and explain what you'll get out of each one of these different chapters. Next, I want to explain how you can get the most out of this course and all the associated resources that I offer, like office hours, mastermind groups for discussions, and how to ask questions throughout the time of your taking this course. And before I wrap this introductory lesson up, let's talk about what you need to be successful in this course. Now, of course, nothing is required. You could just sit back and watch these videos, but if you wanna repeat any of the things that I show you in the course, you'll need to have a few things on your side of the screen. You're gonna to need to have a SharePoint environment in order to fully test and build components that you're gonna be working on. And I suggest you have a Microsoft 365 developer tenant in a local developer environment. We'll get to that later. Now sure, SharePoint Framework is supported on some on-premises SharePoint deployments, but well, we're gonna get more to that in a little bit later. The other two chapters in the free starter bundle you're currently watching cover what environments support the SharePoint Framework and what you need to develop for each one of them in a lot more detail. In addition to a SharePoint environment, while it's not required, it would help if you had some understanding of some of the core concepts in SharePoint. Things like what a tenant is, a site collection, a site, a list, a document library. It will help quite a bit if you know what these things are, but it's not exactly required. Now, I'm not going to cover these in the course, as they're well covered throughout the SharePoint documentation, or if you just take a minute and do a simple Google search. Now, as I said earlier, you're also going to need a developer environment. Now, any relatively modern desktop or laptop that you use to build web apps is gonna work. All, you need, all you're doing is JavaScript-based development with a text editor and running some tools. You don't need a much to really accomplish these different tasks. Don't worry about setting it up right now. I've got a whole chapter that's dedicated to that topic later in this free starter bundle. So just sit tight. Last but certainly not least, you really should have some sort of a web developer background. Ideally, you've got some experience with JavaScript, TypeScript, or building client-side web applications. And if not, don't worry. I want this course to also speak to those traditional SharePoint developers who I know spend more time server-side than they do client-side. So I've got you guys covered as well. Now that's it. 
You don't need much to work with the SharePoint framework, and this lesson is really served as an introductory or overview for this entire chapter. I told you what you can expect from this chapter, explain who the target audience is for this course, and also shared a couple, I guess we can call them prerequisites. Okay, now that's gonna wrap up my brief introduction to the course.